Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vera Rapkina. I'm going to talk about playtests and how to focus your efforts and really cut budget, cut time, and cut resources, which I find really important both for indies and, and for big companies. Uh, a few words about the um, company I'm from, Gizmod. We're doing uh, mobile app development. We focus on music app majorly and also do publishing. We have two offices, one located in London, one located in Minsk. Uh, uh, we have, uh, at the moment, around 12 apps in our brand. We have um, around 300 million downloads, have around uh, 15 million monthly active users, have a number of apps on top 10 on App Store and Google Play. So we majorly do uh, music gaming, uh, which includes rhythm games, simulations. We also do some products for professional musicians. Our top brand is Bitmaker Go, which helps you to create uh, electronic music. Right. We have a number of simulators and a number of utility apps, uh, which uh, like Metronome or Tuner, which help professional and amateur musicians as well. Um, so uh, getting, back to uh, getting back to play tests. So raise your hand if you've ever done a play test. Yeah, and raise your hand if you thought that it could took less time than it actually took. So no? You're all like super efficient. Well, that's great. But I mean, from my experience, sometimes I'm doing a play test and I feel like, yeah, I mean, I think I could have thought, I could have prepared better, I, could, I think I could give people a test, something to test, really nice. And uh, I think uh, play test, so while being a great and really important thing to do for your product, it, it can also be a drain of effort. And uh, so we decided to share some tips and tricks, some framework, how to make all your efforts focused and how to get uh, utmost from this process. A few words why playtests are important in my point of view. So the, f the first thing is that you receive information early, and this is important because the earlier you get information, the more conscious decisions you can make, right? So this kind of gives you focus and knows in what direction to move. Uh, it allows you to study various user patterns uh, because, uh, well, basically when we create an app, uh, we're thinking more tailoring out to ourselves, to our team, but uh, when it gets down to life, it, we figure out that there are many different people who treat our product really differently, and studying these user patterns early uh, helps us to get this product more applicable to larger audiences. And finally, it helps you to reduce things less because, well, you, we all know how painful it is to reduce things, especially when you ask your team to do something and then you say, well, figure it out, now you have to redo it again. So in, instead of you know, demotivating the team and even demotivating your budget, so I think like introducing playtests in right places in the right way helps you to elim eliminate all those issues and really get uh, down to what actually works, right? So in ideal world, uh, it's best to introduce playtests as early as possible because the more information you have, the better decisions you make. So if uh, in ideal world, if you have an idea, you test it, then uh, you ch might, might change the idea. While you're happy, you go to prototype, you test the top prototype, uh, you, you get, once you're happy with the prototype, uh, you go to implementation, uh, you test the implementation, uh, and once you're happy, you release, and it m as well might lead you to new ideas, actually not only at the final stage, but at all stages. So in the real world, you want to have play tests and every, every stage. In reality, I mean, it, it sounds costly, and it might be costly, uh, because uh, this is a lot of iterations, and this is a lot of people involved in the process. Uh, yeah, so I'd say that it's best to start play, uh, doing play tests as early as possible, but uh, I find that like, the many people are not very comfortable with starting you know, from the very beginning, and the earlier you start, the more vague the uh, artifacts are, which is an issue. So you have to be more better, better prepared. So I'd say like, start doing play tests where you feel comfortable and move like, early, early with every other product. So, um, yeah, and when preparing yourself for a product play test, we'll split it into three parts, which is your product, your interviewee, and yourself. So we'll start with the product. So yeah, I think you all agree that play tests are really important for a product, but the question is how to make it really work for your product and bring the best and really quickly, because I mean, as a business, anyway, we want really quick results and like real nice and quick results. So, and 
probably cheap, right? Uh, so I'll be using, for example, uh, one of our apps, is which we decided to choose a smaller app just uh, so we don't have to explain it yourself. The story is that we have a metronome app which we launched in 2012. It was really popular among its audience, uh, but at some point it got you know, a little bit outdated, so we decided, well, it's time to fresh it up. So we not only freshed up the design, a little bit information architecture. We, uh, since we major now in you know, music gaming, we decided, yeah, we're good at games. Why don't we do some uh, music games for, uh, for the app? So we introduced a few rhythm games for the, here, right? So we kind of started the audience, figured out that majority of people who use our app are students, amateurs. So we thought, well, helping them to practice a little bit more with rhythm games would be nice and engaging experience. Uh, just uh, So this will kind of move from utility apps to game here as well. And we conducted a number of play tests I'll be, I will be discussing. Right. So, and we came uh, with a framework we found really useful. And it, uh, I mean, it's not only useful, it's really simple uh, to introduce, to use. So uh, what we figured out, most important, I think this is like the main idea, uh, is that when you're doing a play test, you're actually not uh, testing the game, but you're testing the hypothesis about your game. And this helped us a lot because uh, it's not like basically asking a person to use your app and trying to find something. Just doing the app, this proper preparation with uh, making a, a list of hypotheses uh, really uh, makes difference because it helps you focus and it makes this whole process so much more scalable because, well, I'd love to have a number of clones of myself just to send them to many people, talk to so many people, many other, you know, interviews, but at the end of the day, it's like we have limited capacity. And so what we did is we made a, a, a brainstorm with a team. We made a list of hypotheses of things we like and we don't like about the, uh, you know, the app, the process, the part of the game. And uh, so we allocated it uh, to each screen. And this is like was the starting point. So and. Uh, so I'll show you the way it works for one for one of the hypotheses. So uh, one of the games was called Bird Beats. Uh, is it a video? Yeah. So the, uh, the, uh, there was a, a bird uh, beating on a tree uh, on a tree trunk, and you had to uh, you know repeat the rhythm, and it goes and on. Uh, the you know melodies get harder. So keep playing with this thing. And at some point, we noticed that, well, for some melodies, that at some level of complexity, they get a little bit too hard. So we want, might want a listen again button. So, and as you see, the top bar is semi-transparent. So we're like, OK, so let it be semi-transparent. But already at design stage, we had an issue. Maybe it's like not hard to notice. So we had some you know, discussion within the team. And instead of arguing and just basically, uh, you know, making decision out of nothing, we did play a task, figured out that, well, actually people cannot find the button, and I mean, turn it to a more colorful one, which worked perfectly. And this is like a great example, like how you can use play task, not only for, only for large, you know, testing of ideas, but already at uh, implementation stage, for tuning up things and avoiding, you know, uh, making a more conscious decision, avoiding, you know, any ruffle, uh, any, uh, you know, argument within your team. And now, like, everyone is happy with the button because we know that, this is what actually works. So, um, so this way you kind of create many, many hypotheses. It can be minor things, major things, things you have concerns about, or maybe things you don't have concerns about, but you can't try and think of, think around the things. So, uh, idea is, I mean, it's a good uh, if you're making little hypotheses. Either put them all in a positive way or in a negative way, because when, once you've been filling interviews, uh, it will be easier for you to go for pluses and minuses. And uh, now you need to create scenarios. So here, this part uh, works really well. So you see to which screens uh, your hypotheses are allocated. And then you create a scenario. Uh, well, to use it sounds like really simple. It, it's better if it is one sentence, because users tend to have short memory. And you, you see there's a lot of information for them, like app is new. You and you, so so many things. So it's better, I'd say, like two sentences max. So for uh, users, it would sound like please complete a round of bird game. But uh, for you, it's like a map. You like, exp you know, like they will go here. They go game cover. They need to do this, this. They go to instruction, and you like basically have this map yourself. Like knowing that, well, I want to check this hypothesis here. This is hypothesis here. Uh, there, etc. So, like that sounds simple on the interface at the back end. You have all these things, and uh, 
after you've done the interview, uh, you basically fill it in. I think it's a nice way to have a comment section down below uh, the grid you have rate and uh, maybe put some more information about the interview uh, himself or herself rate. And this, this worked really well for us because this is easy. It's easy to introduce to other people and to teach them how to use it. And uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, it gives a kind of statistic type of things because uh, I mean, uh, without play test, this, you, don't, you don't probably want to go for like really, uh, you know, mathematician type of statistics. You don't want to go to for, for confidence level, etc. But you really want to have understanding because no matter how much time effort you spend on your game, there will be people who will get certain things and won't get the same things, and that's fine because uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, game design is not like creating a perfection, uh, but it's about creating an entertaining, nice experience. And it's fine that some, there will be a user pattern when people probably won't get something. But I, I think like it's not that get like 80% of the game, this is still OK. Right? Uh, so uh, going back to this framework, uh, there are more things that you actually have to prepare. So a few words about how to prepare an interviewee, because that, it is a challenging experience for people who, who conduct an interview at Playtest. It is also a challenging experience for people. I figured out like two major issues. Like one, uh, one thing is that people don't really want you to give a negative feedback. And uh, you actually have to, because negative feedback, it, it's really useful. And like you actually go for a playtest, hoping that they they will really, really like it and love it and will be happy. But actually, what you actually want is negative feedback. So I'd, I'd recommend, like, before you do a playtest, and especially, like, you know, people see how you're passionate about the product, you created it, you just brought it to them, and they're like, oh, I don't want to hurt anybody. At least I don't know these people, etc. So uh, I pay special attention to, like, that I'm here for negative feedback, and I'll be happy to hear that, and even, like, kind of, uh, navigate the interview, trying to figure out at least minor things that ca can be, uh, you know, can be a problem. Another thing is like there's a different type of, uh, of interviewees uh, is that those who really want to help you in a way that they give you solutions, they don't really want to discuss the problems like, I invented a feature for you and another feature for you and this is really great. But I, I think that uh, what's important here is to take the solutions but also to understand why they want it and what the issue is. And there are like, a number of methods to understand this. I think the easiest one is to use five whys. So you ask questions trying to figure out the problem area, or maybe what, what they, why they like it, because uh, you know, like you are more experienced with designing game when, than your users. So, but your users know better what they want. So this is how you kind of meet here at Playtest. And I think uh, it is no less to um, you know prepare yourself because uh, the um, playtest is usually it's like really encouraging experience. It also is like I don't know, uh, but. I have been like I have done so many playtests, but I still feel a bit nervous every time going in there because, well, I'm showing something and uh, it's like a little bit nerve-wracking to me. Uh, so I think problem one, and I think this is the reason why many people avoid playtests or at least avoid them at an early stage, is that this feeling <laughs> and that product is not ready to be displayed because, now you know, doing a playtest, uh, we know that this is just a matter of research. Uh, Anyway, we feel like, well, um, we want to be praised for things we show. So this is, I think, similar that to people who don't want to get ne negative feedback. It's hard for some interviewers to get this negative feedback. So I think the same mantra works here as well. And I'll show you like a brief uh, you know, sample from the app. There's like another game which uh, you know help you to study node values, and I mean we started doing some play tests already at uh, you know paper prototype stage. So we imagined like this is the way we uh, imagined. Pretty soon we figured out that people cannot associate nodes and time signature. So we moved to this variant with you know a bigger time signature, nicer uh, you know layout. So people now got the idea, but they couldn't get. Uh, you know, like, they didn't like the numbers. They're like, oh, the numbers are too aggressive. And we're like, oh, come on. But OK, so we changed change the numbers. And now, like, yeah, the numbers are nice, but it looks a little bit dull. So we ended up with this type of game design. And of course, I mean, we could have, uh, you know, moved and just spent some time with our designer and end up at the, th at the number four. But there's high probability that in our brainstorm, within our team, we'd probably end up at number three. Or maybe we didn't, didn't know what's 
what we don't like and what users need. So uh, I mean, there is low probability that we'll end up at number four, uh, looking this way and knowing that this is what our user wants. So uh, basically, I think play tests at early stage is useful because it gives you the right focus and right direction and uh, kind of you have this feeling, which is, I think, really important that you know what you are doing and you know like that this is like nice things which would be accepted by users and actually needed by users. And just another like quick problem, I personally have issues all the time, is like we still want to be praised and we want you know to uh, think about uh, many things beforehand, which is a nice thing as any, you know, for any product designer, product manager, but still, you know, like playtests really cover not only like major issues, which is nice, but you can figure out like really small things you could have thought about. But uh, I think it's important to understand that this is just a matter of research, and it doesn't matter who tells you. You self tell you, well, this is an issue, we should fix that. Uh, like a user tells you, because anyway, it's like a joint effort. Like a, s a small example was, I don't know, you can see here, but uh, I mean, um, there's like a yellow uh, sun on yellow background, which is, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I cannot even see it from here. So uh, at some point, there was like a design, and the issue was that there are like different, like some users consider it as a button, and so we change it. And yes, of course, we could have thought about it ourselves, like at the earlier stage, but I mean, having all these, you know, minor things covered by, uh, you know, play tests really brings you to, uh, uh, help you to focus on things that are important, creating new things, or polishing new things, creating new logic. So it also like these minor issues are covered just by playtests. You don't have to worry about it. And just as a final thought, uh, I'd say think of playtests not as tasks but more as a journey uh, to learn your customers and product better. Because I think this is what matters the most. And uh, don't think it's uh, as it, uh, you know playtesting will have a negative experience as it's testing your ability or your design. It just just a matter of research and a matter of joint research and joint effort together with your audience. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. So one of the, one of the biggest things that I, I have when I've done these kind of play research was uh, we did a lot of this at PlayStation Home as well. The difficulty is making sure that you're open to that feedback. Yeah. And not try to solve it <laughs> there and then. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like it's really important to be mentally prepared, and th that's why I was saying that, well, you as an interviewer yourself are also important, and yeah. be open to negative feedback, be open to positive feedback, and be open like to not getting hurt by it, because I find this is why the reason, give, uh, the reason many people give up on it, or just avoid it, like say, yeah, I mean, I understand this is important, let's do it at the very, very, very end of our launch. Uh, and I think the reason for that is not like money, it's not resources, but it's like this emotional experience. So I'm, that's why I'm saying like be prepared for this yeah. mentally and be fine with other people like finding out things and helping you. Actually, one of the things we used to do is we used to not be in the room. Okay. We used to have independent people running it because the trouble is I'm going to show you how to use the UI. <laughs> And I know how to use the UI, and you're stupid if you don't know how to do it my way. <laughs> Not true, obviously. <laughs> uh, and, but the thing is, if, you have to, if I have to tell someone else how they've got to then do it to other people, it really does show you where the flaws are. And we actually used to sit in a room uh, with a, with a uh, one-way mirror, so we could look out at them, okay. and they couldn't see us. Uh, and it was amazing how just things like that really do change the way people react. If they're in a nice, cosy looking room that's got a nice mirror, they may know that there are people watching them, <laughs> but they forget. And you get a lot more honest responses, I, th I found, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I'd say at Gizmod, I'd say we do, uh, as product managers, we do some of play tests. Uh, at initial stages, where it's you know more influences deci business decisions, because I find I figure out like prototype stage pre-prototype stage, like pitching, etc. I think it's so hard, it's so vague, so it's easier that you say, and going forward to implementation stage, uh, for many reasons, because you, the, the further you go, the more people you want to be involved in your playtests. So we do, part of them are done by me, majority are done by 
we do some okay team loves to do play tests some independent people love to do play tests so it's it's like we, we send ambassadors all over yeah and i find it really useful when different people conduct play tests because different people notice different things yeah. and have different you know patterns well we had a, a an uh, so i've been making, working on a rocky horror show game rhythm action dance game and uh, we had a lot of very you know passionate fans and we got some great feedback from them but it was all very positive and of course the moment we went to soft launch it didn't work it because they weren't looking at it as a game they weren't giving us feedback as a game they already had a frame of reference which is are we representing the brand of rocky horror right which we were so it's incredibly important to actually like you say uh, you know the hypothesis and setting the hypothesis at the beginning and i would argue the sooner you do that, the better. But the sooner you can give up having anything to do, any knowledge, any uh, involvement with the actual players, as soon as you can get in front of people who don't care about you emotionally, <laughs> the better. So, you know, I think this is an amazing process. And the sooner you can go from this to shifting to a, a live, open experience, the better. Yeah, I, I can agree with that, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. Sorry, I, I hijacked the questions there because it's something I'm passionate about. <laughs> yeah.